sorry. <laughs> we want to welcome you all today. We're so glad that you're here. We're going to try and be super, super efficient. Um, so as you have seen, everybody's getting food. If you haven't gotten food or if you want more food, please feel free to get up and get more food and do whatever. Um, it's very casual, but this is an opportunity just for us all to be on the same page for Cross Point Kids Camp. We're going to wait and pray for our food and a blessing and pray for camp and all that at the end because everybody was kind of coming in hodgepodge, so we'll do that. If, so there's handouts on the table that are uh, stapler things. There's two sheets, and that's most of what we're covering today. This is the fun facts you need to know and learn from Cross Point Kids Camp. Um, so the second page is a prayer sheet. So we ask you guys all to be praying as well. It's an awesome resource that came with the Mega Sports Camp curriculum. It's pretty cool. So use that and be praying for the camp. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of things. I talk really fast. So you just, you know, tell me to put the speed brake on if I'm going too fast. Because I really would like to honor everyone's time and be out of here. As we go along, if you have any questions about anything at all, if you don't have a pencil or a pen, there's pencils and pens over here. There's This is blank on the back on purpose, so you guys can take notes if you have questions. If we don't have to, time to answer them in the group at the end, you can see Michael, Shannon, or me, or Sarah, or somebody else, and they'll make something up for you. <laughs> um, so, the first thing we're going to do is have Sarah come up. So our, our theme this, this year is good vibes only. And you've probably seen this picture around. So um, you'll be hearing a lot more about that as time goes on. Okay, Michael, what's the best way to change the screen? Uh, I've got a space bar. A space bar. Yep. There you go. Everybody should know with this information right here. It's also on your handout if you do not know it. So <laughs> it's in black and white in your hands. So please <laughs> don't forget when you're coming. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to invite Sarah Snyder to come up. She's the Cross Point Children's Ministry Director here at uh, church, and she's going to talk to us about what we should do with children. Kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll do that right now. Okay, you have another handout coming. Sorry, but not really, because it's important information. <laughs> So you will have this additional two-sided, and I'm going to go over all of it, but not totally in detail because you have this in your hand, and it is important for you to look over because this is policies, procedures, safety. It's so important that we are caring for the kids well, that we leave a good impression on parents who are dropping their kids off and trusting us to take care of them, um, and that we just follow what we have we're under the covering of Cross Point Kids and the church. So these are policies that we have. So um, it's not the most exciting part to talk about, but it's super important. So, <laughs> so pay attention. Um, so to see on the first part, just volunteer requirements, which all of you should have received an email from me um, about what is required that everybody over 18 years old, we do run a background check on you. And I'm looking around this room, and I feel like most of you have done that already. If you haven't, please check your email because it comes um, not from my account, but from a different. It comes from Crosspoint still, right, Corey? No, it comes from. What is it called again? Trusted That's right. Yes, yeah, so the email comes from Trusted Employee, and it has a link for you to just click on. You fill out some basic info, and it sends the background check back to us really quickly. You know, anyone working with kids who's. 18 or older, we have um, it's law also to do to do that. So if you haven't or you see one and you have a link that has expired, let me or Corey know and we'll resend it to you again. But um, again, I think most of you in this room have done it. And also, Illinois law is that everyone, even churches working with children, are um, even in volunteer basis are mandated reporters. And we are requiring that everyone who works with kids, what everyone I have on Sunday mornings, and even for this camp, goes through an online training about what is involved um, as a mandated reporter and how to look for signs of abuse or just be aware of it. And that link is on here, but you also should have received an email about that. It takes about 45, 60 minutes to complete that. 
And then at the end is a certificate that you can email to me, you can print, you can take a screenshot if you're having trouble with it and, and you know, give it to me or to Corey and we keep it in a file to say, hey, this person completed this. Um, and it's, it's also something if you're doing it and you're like, man, I don't have a full 45 minutes, you can pause it at any time, come back two days later, finish it. Um, it works out well like that so you don't have to commit the full you know, hour sitting in front of your screen if you need to break up your time. So those are important things if you haven't done those. We need, um, I can't remember what I said in the email about when we want here, maybe the week Probably the Friday before camp starts, we'd like to have all of these, you know, certificates for mandated reporter. And um, again, this is just following law and, you know, really caring for the kids that are in our care during this time. So, moving on to some safety things. And I'm just going to kind of go down here that, um, you know, you'll see in these bullet points or whatever, but adult supervision, we always have two volunteers working together with the groups of kids. No one is left alone with a group of kids by themselves in a room. Um, and that one of those volunteers must be 18 or older. So you might have a 16 year old that's working with you um, and then you're an adult. That's okay to have two, you know, a 16 year old or whatever and a, um, an adult who's over 18 in a room with kids. And we also have another thing too that um, we don't have two related adults working alone with a group of kids, so not a husband and a wife, you know, being the only adults in the room with kids, or a mother and a daughter. That's just another safety measure. If you have questions about that, you can come ask me. It's okay, like my husband and I can be in a room, and Naomi's in there with us as well. There's three of us, you know, an additional adult, but just never two related adults being the only adults um, with a group of kids, or one-on-one -on -one with a kid as well. And um, again, I already said, volunteers are never to be alone in a room with our keepers. So again, these are just, like we care about the safety of the kids that are in our church. And um, these are just safety measures to make sure it's really our privilege to be able to care for them. Um, this year, I think drop off and pick up is gonna be a little different than it has been. We're gonna be more um, organizing than I wasn't here last year. This is how I do it for um, what we do on Wednesday nights. So every parent, when they come in, they must sign their children in, we'll have attendance sheets, and we're gonna have a registration team, and um, they just need a signature, or um, you know, whatever, their initials to say that I dropped my child off, and then the really super important part is that every parent must sign their child out when they pick up. And so I believe the head coaches at the end will be with their group of kids, they'll have a sheet with their specific group of kids, and you'll direct parents to go to that specific, you know, it's like the cheerleading coach to go to her and they sign out. And the other thing is, is that we do not release any children to an adult that their parents have not authorized them to be picked up by. So we ask that on the registration sheet that they write down other adults that maybe, you know, if grandma's gonna pick up their kids that they write grandma's name and phone number on there. So if grandma comes um, and you don't recognize her, you say, hey, I see your names on the list but I just need to see your photo ID to make sure you are the grandma that is on here. And again, just so important for safety measure that we are not accidentally sending kids with people they should not be going with, that their names will be on the list who is authorized to pick up. And if there's a question about any of that, probably see registration people because they would have all the information about who's authorized to pick up. Um, and yes, can I see if I forgot anything else there? Okay, here's just kind of some common sense stuff about if you are with a child who's injured, let's pray that no one gets injured, but that kind of stuff happens. Um, we do have first aid kits that are labeled around and we have a safety coach, I believe. Um, so there will be people to go to for those kinds of things. If anything serious happens, um, of course, do your best to remain calm, to help the kids to remain calm, the kids who are, you know, a kid who's injured, the kids who are around, um, just having that try to be a calm in, in the storm of if do not move a seriously injured child <laughs> and do not leave a, an injured child in any way even if they're cut and just bleeding alone call another fellow volunteer hey go to our camp director Cheryl 
um, or Shannon could be around, uh, or safety, who's our safety coach? Heather Garrison. Heather. Right over there. Okay, wave your hand. Yeah, Heather Garrison. Uh, I know Gretchen Spooner is also going to be around for things um, that those people will know how to then assess the situation to if we need to call 911, if we need to contact parents. Um, there are people that are around to do that. It's your job, obviously, to keep calm if there's some blood or something that we need to apply pressure to and send another volunteer to go get, get help and they can take it from there. And we do have accidents and incident reports too, which we would have like the camp director or safety coach fill those out. But if you witness something happening, you'll probably be asked to come and maybe fill out what happened. This child tripped and bumped their head during this time. So we have parents sign that just to say, hey, we let you know that your kid got hurt and then we have that information as well. So I will get a bunch of those to you, Heather, before camp. Um, okay, and another thing just for safety and supervision, this is our bathroom policy. You guys can look over it. Um, we always have, it's never one adult taking one child to the bathroom. You know, but something like this where they're just back there and there's a bunch of stuff going on here in the room. It's okay if an adult is standing near that because there's other adults in the room and you just let the child go in. But if we need to go somewhere taking a group of kids, that it is one adult and at least two children. And I have on here, you know, especially if we're using like the bathrooms that have several stalls, the adult looks, make sure nobody's in there, it's not supposed to be in there. Send the kids in. You can wait out in the hall or just make sure the door is propped until the kids come out. Or, you know, if it's one of these bathrooms that's just a single toilet, you stand on the outside and wait for them to be done. And also, if there is a need, especially if you do have some younger kids, if there's a kid having trouble zipping up their pants, something like that, please don't go in there by yourself and help them. You know, flag down another adult to be present with you as well. Like, hey, I need to just help this kid. <laughs> if it's a situation where that kid can't step out in the hall where there'd be other people. Um, so sometimes these things I know feel tedious, but they're so important just to watch over these kids and, and care for them well. So that is our bathroom policy. Um, here, this next part, you flip it over. Again, I feel like this is common sense, but also writing this down, what is appropriate physical contact with the kids who are coming and what's inappropriate so you can look through this. I think most of this is self-explanatory. We're not gonna hit kids, we're not gonna touch them inappropriately. Um, and here are things that are appropriate. And I put a you know a little asterisk on the end because no child should be forced to engage in any sort of physical contact, even just something that is appropriate, like high fives or you know, holding your hand to walk down the hall. That if a child is not comfortable with that, we're not gonna, you know, force that or like, hey, I want, you know. A hug that that we respect those boundaries of any kid you know I know sometimes like preschool or something you might have a kid that's trying to run off please grab their hand and I know that the situation like that you need to have discernment if they might be fighting and struggling against you is different than a child who says like no I don't want to give you a high five right now um, just respecting those boundaries that's really important that a kid can know that if they are uncomfortable with anything that they can say that and that they'll be listened to um, and same for you, if you have kids poking at you, tell them the same thing, same boundary, hey, I don't want to be touched right now as well. So, um, but just look over these on your own. Some of these things I have on here you might not think about, but it's not appropriate to be tickling the kids or giving piggyback rides, things like that too. Um, in our last section, which Cheryl may end up talking about a little bit more, but I have this written out just, um, kind of our discipline policy and how to expect that for camp. Um, you know, thinking of discipline as that's an opportunity to be guiding and correcting. We're not, it's not for punishing. You know, the Lord leads, the good shepherd leads his sheep. You know, so that's guiding and directing and that's um, how we should be treating these kids and guiding and redirecting. And I'm sure we're gonna have a group of kids there are gonna be situations where there's a child who keeps doing something they shouldn't do. So here, um, and of course, number two, we are never to physically punish a child who's here at camp. That's a, um, again, should be obvious, but I'm writing that down. We're not going to do that. And um, number three, I just have a variety of ways to like, let's be proactive. Kids who are bored are more likely <laughs> to act up. 
kids who don't understand boundaries or expectations or don't feel a, a connection, those are kids that are more likely to get, you know, kind of off track and not know what's going on. So here are all these ways to be staying engaged. You get the opportunity to be hanging out with these kids, making one-on-one -on -one connections with them. Um, that's so great, you know, be spending time one-on-one -on -one with the kids and expressing interest in what they um, like and enjoy and getting to know them helps so much. Um, and setting clear expectations and boundaries. I know as a whole group, there'll be expectations and boundaries. And then when you're in smaller groups or even seeing kids, you know, you might be doing a different job, like you're doing registration, but you see kids walking by being silly, remind them of what the expectations and boundaries are at camp. So those reminders should help <laughs> skirt um, misbehaviors. But, um, and then redirecting this behavior. You see a kid doing something they're not supposed to do. Respond quickly. Uh, I know it's easy to think, eh, maybe they won't keep doing it, but just go in quickly and make that good connection. Remind them what the expectation is. Redirect them to the right thing to do. Um, and, you know, I put here, be gentle but firm in redirecting what's appropriate. Like, these are our expectations, so we expect you to follow them. And I probably should put this to the top, but encourage the kids. You know, especially if you're getting to know them, see, encourage what you see that's good that they're doing. Don't compare them to other kids like, hey, Timmy's doing a great job and you aren't. Like, I don't, we don't want that. But just to be encouraging. And sometimes kids that are just, it's harder for them to stay focused, ask them to be your helper for things. Look for ways to engage them. Like, hey, did you pass this stuff out? Do you want to be the line leader? And sometimes that can feel counterintuitive. The kid that is bothering you the most, you might not think, oh, he's not the best example to set, but try that. Bring that kid in and say, hey, I think you can be responsible with this. Let's give it a try. Um, so these are all ways that hopefully we can stay a step ahead. But number four, if misbehavior continues after several redirections, um, again, that is a good time to pull that child aside, not alone in a room, but you pull that child aside, remind them, um, and let them know that the camp director, or we also have Gretchen, will be around so that you can flag her down too. Um, if there is a behavior issue, but let the child know if you continue doing this same thing, we're going to have to get Miss Cheryl or Miss Gretchen and talk about it. And then again, if it, that continues to happen, then contact Cheryl or Gretchen and have them come and intervene. And of course, we want to hear, you know, Gretchen or Cheryl will listen to the adult. Hey, this is what's been happening. Listen to the child and they can choose the best course of action. You know, that child needs to sit out for a while if there's something Big going on, hopefully not. Let's pray not that we would need to contact parents, but um, that would be our step, a little process there. If you feel like something's going on that's more than you can handle, then Cheryl's gonna have to handle it. <laughs> <laughs> or Gretchen, she's a Gretchen. All right, I'm Gretchen. So, um, yeah, I hope I'm kind of whizzing through that, but this is in your hands, so if you have questions, it's there, and if you have questions afterwards, then you can. Find me and thank you. Talk about it. So, oh, me? I'm, I'm next. You are. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I'm sure this down Sarah. I talk loud. Hi, everyone. I'm really thankful for Sarah and the work that she's doing, and I'm especially thankful that she gets to do the not so fun stuff, and then I get to talk about the fun stuff. So, thank you, Sarah, for taking that burden. Um, if you are not, ha okay, is there anybody who has not served in like our BBS Mega Sports Camp before? Sorry, sorry, Ben. Oh, you haven't? Oh, there are. All right, great, okay. So we got some, we got some newbies. So I want to talk a little bit about what Mega Sports Camp is, what it looks like, and what our ask is for all of you, right? So um, we're trying to improve, develop, be, be more cross pointy gonna make that an adjective um, as we as we do this each year and so one of the things that we do is we come together and we gather around and we do sports for the most part but there's crafts um, there's cheer and it's, these are these um, opportunities for these kids to come in and do something physical something active but then have conversations and lessons around the gospel and around what Jesus says about who they are the entire week is situated kind of around this idea of this memory verse, right? So pretty much every VBS I, that I know of has a memory verse that they're, we're trying to convince the kids, get the kids, challenge the kids to learn throughout the week. Um, does anybody know this verse already by heart? Has anybody got this from my verse? Hebrews 10, 35? Anybody? 
Great, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna read it a couple times together. Um, so I want you guys, each of us, as volunteers, should know this verse. Right. This is because what, as you go through the week, you're going to have opportunities to just have conversations with kids and to just throw out like, hey, like, let's do the verse together. Right. Because this is this is the key. We don't want it to be about us or just about sports or competing. We want it to be about about learning scriptures. So let's read this together. Hebrews 10, 35 says, do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. All right. Great. Let's do it one more time. A little bit, a little bit more. <clears throat> firmness in you guys, right? Ready? Here we go. Do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. All right, who thinks they, they haven't memorized already? All right, so here's the thing though. That's often what we end up asking kids to do, right? We say, here, we're going to throw in front of you a couple times and then we want you to memorize it, but we don't have repetition. We don't have development. So I want you guys to be memorizing this. It's, it's in your packet, Hebrews 1035. It's the NLT version. So it's nice and easy to read. It's nice and easy to memorize. Please learn that and just have that situated in your heart as we go through the week. So you have the memory verse, and then we have a word of the day for each day. Okay, so it spells out vibes, a fancy little um, mnemonic, right? So, um, and you have these words on your hand out if you want to know what they are. When we share stories of athletes and things like that, because that's going to be part of our lesson component, they will be tied into this word. So we'll be looking at athletes who have um, interacted with the, and where's that sports flash go? What is number one? Uh, so like, uh, Emma, uh, Emma Radakanu, okay, uh, a tennis player who I don't know, um, is going to be is going to be day one, and so we're going to be looking at um, the question that gets asked at the end of the, this lesson uh, is this idea of, have you ever thought your value changed based on whether you were winning or losing, right? Why or why not? Right? These are the kinds of questions that we're going to be asking, and so each day is kind of around a word. Those words tie into that verse, but the idea is to be challenging our children to be looking to Jesus for these, these words. Valuable, influential, brave, encouraging, and selfless. So the sports that we wrap into are, or activities are, are cheerleading, crafts, basketball. We swapped out soccer for volleyball this year. Um, so soccer was, was pretty popular among the, especially the um, younger Burmese kids, but we, we know that they, the, the, the Burmese um, folks here really love volleyball. So we're trying to switch it. We'll see how that goes. Who's, uh, we're, what? We are planning on doing it out there. We, we definitely, totally, absolutely have a rain plan. For sure. And it's called, we're going to pray that there's no rain all week. Okay. Um, but so we're going to be trying that, and then, and then we're going to have some separate activities for our preschoolers. But the idea is that we're giving them something active to do. They're going to be learning a little bit. They're going to be having fun. All the while, we, as the leaders, whether we're leading the activities, whether we're huddle coaches or assistant coaches or the photographers or... Um, uh, Jackson is this, this year's Mega Man or whatever, that we are challenging the kids to be memorizing this verse and attaching it to what that means for who they are in Jesus. Right? That's the entire point of the week. So to help us with that, the kids will get these sports flashes um, every night. I think we, we give them out nightly, right? We, we don't give the whole thing. And so each night has just continued conversation pieces to send home with the parents. The church isn't the only one that does the discipleship. Parents do a significant portion of discipleship. Um, some parents maybe don't go to church, maybe they don't don't know Jesus yet, but they can still we can still challenge them to have these conversations with their kids. Um, and then they get to say like I did the homework on the back. They bring it in the next day, and they get entered into a raffle. And every day we have some prizes that we give away. So we're incentivizing, right? Incentivizing, incentivizing, and sometimes. It can be easy for people like me to be like, well, they should just get over it. They don't need prizes. They should just love the Lord. But they're children. And so putting prizes into it will give them a little bit of an incentive. Honestly, even as adults, sometimes we need those incentives, right? Like we, yeah, we like prizes for doing things, right? <laughs> you say chocolate? That's a good, that's a good prize. Um, but so we want to be encouraging them to do these sports flashes and to really be thinking deeply about them. I, I'm always reminded of, of a tendency that we as Christians have, like we always know the Sunday school answer, right? The Sunday school answer is always Jesus, right? No matter what, Jesus. Um, but we want to be challenging our kids to be thinking a little bit beyond, like into what does that mean for, for them, for who they are, 
for their value. Like, what, is that, what does that mean? So those sports flashes will be going um, home every night. We'll be receiving them when they get checked in the following day, and then there'll be a drawing. Um, I think it's like at the midway point, if I remember correctly from, from last year. So there are activities all over the church. In fact, I'm really excited because we're gonna have a, a decor team this year that's gonna be helping kind of make the church look a little bit more fun and, and kids campy, VBSE, um, that I think will hopefully help create a little bit more, um, it's hard to say immersion when it's in a salon brick, but like a little bit more of an exciting environment for these kids as they're moving around. Please get to know the areas where your activities or, or where you're going to be involved in. Um, it's good to have a general idea of where everything is, but obviously if you're in cheer, it doesn't matter as much for you if you didn't know where volleyball is, right? But if you have a kid who ends up getting separated from a group and gets lost, it's like, I need to go, I'm trying to figure out where the basketball went and this building is a maze and I've never been here before, I have no idea where I'm going, you have an idea of where to direct them. So just kind of get used to those ideas. We will have um, prayer happening all week, which I'm really excited about, which I believe is the library, because it was last year, yes. Um, so if you at any point need prayer, if any of the kids are like, man, like, or parents coming in are like, I just need some prayer for this thing that's going on, please like send them over there, let's pray with them, let's pray for them. Uh, I love the fact that we have a dedicated space for prayer. So within all of this, I wanna challenge every single person here to do something that's gonna put you know, outside of your comfort zone, all right? Maybe not all of you. Uh, Dave's not here, so it might be all of you. Okay, I want, I want us to get really, really, really silly this, this year. Here's what I mean by that. I want us to be willing to, it's a sports game camp, I want us to be willing to get decked out in, in sports gear. I don't mean go out and buy really, really expensive jerseys. Tim probably has some already. But, <laughs> you know, but, but we wanna be joining the kids in this excitement, right? Because kids model what they see, and if they come in and they see a whole bunch of adults who are like, all right guys, we're gonna love Jesus today, and we're gonna do some sports, and I really don't wanna be here, but I really want you to love Jesus, so I'm gonna do this for you. That is modeling for them something completely different than what we're telling them we want them to experience. And so we wanna challenge everybody to get some, some kind of sports gear. You might already have it, it could just be a baseball cap, it could be a whistle, it could be one of those big inflatable finger thingamabobs, right? Have fun with it though, let your personality shine through. Maybe some of you are really into sports, I am clearly not, um, I am clearly not into sports, but um, <laughs> but uh, if you have some favorite athletes, even if you're not into sports, you're like, I really like this athlete, right? We, you know, we're Christians, so at some point somebody's going to be like, well, Tom Brady, right? Uh. <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry. Okay. No. Anyways, um, get into it though. If you have a favorite coach, if you have a favorite athlete. Favorite sport? Maybe you don't know anybody in the sport, but you're like, I think I like baseball more than the other ones, so like, I guess I'll dress in something, I'll have a baseball club. But what this does is this will help break through your barriers a little bit. Christians can sometimes be a little too serious, a little too somber all the time, right? We're allowed to have fun. Um, and so I wanna challenge all of you guys to do this, where every day, you can wear the same thing every day, maybe wash it if you sweat a lot, but like, it doesn't have to be a different outfit every single day. But get into the theme. Right? Get involved with it so the kids see you being excited about the things that we're talking about, and they'll model that. And then, related to this, Danny, can you stand up for me? So I don't know how many of you have had a chance to meet Danny to give us a nice wave. Danny <laughs> is fabulous, and she's in charge of our, our dance team, I have a, the dance coach, huddle coach, I don't know what they call it, right? So Danny, I have a question for you. How much would you love it if every single volunteer who is serving this, this year actually joined in the dances. It's super fun because it gives the kids the freedom to do it too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. How many of you, you can sit, thank you guys. I didn't really need you to stand, stand up, but I really enjoyed that. Here's my question for you guys. How many of you, and, and be honest, how many of you hate dancing? Great. I want all of you to set that aside for the week. <laughs> all right, and I mean this very seriously, because for the same reason, if we get to the kids and we say, guys, we're gonna worship, and it's gonna be fun, we have this dance team with some, some people who are up there like trying their hardest to bring energy and excitement, and their, their leaders are sitting next to them going, who, who are they gonna imitate? They're gonna imitate the leaders. So, I'm giving you permission to be silly. I'm giving you permission to get excited, to laugh at yourself. 
Because I promise you, if anybody in here who is volunteering is busy laughing at you while, while we're dancing and worshiping and being, being silly, they're, they're thinking about the wrong thing. Because for this week, we need to be thinking about the kids and helping them understand. For this week, for this, these five days that we get them for a couple hours a week, we want to be showing them Jesus. And I'm like, Jesus is beautiful, and Jesus is fun, and Jesus is powerful. And like, that should make us feel free. Right? David danced in the street. I don't recommend the same outfit that he had when he danced in the street. But he danced in the street. Okay? So I want to encourage all of you to really, really get into this. And this doesn't mean that you have to act like me, right? Your silliness doesn't look like my silliness. My silliness doesn't look like Dave's silliness. But be, oh, give yourself that permission to be free. Because Christ wants you to have enjoy his creation. And Christ wants you to love on these kids. And these kids are going to model what they see. So when we, are, when we are worshiping together, when we're dancing, dance. Right? It's okay if you go the wrong direction. It's okay if you use your left foot instead of your right foot. It's okay if you accidentally kick your co-leader. Don't accidentally kick the children. <laughs> it's okay to do those things. But to do them to the glory of God. So I really want to encourage all of you to do that because all of those things are going to help uplift our kids and help them understand that they don't need to be ashamed or feel weird about the fact that they, they are generally fairly naturally silly, right? They may not realize that they're silly. We think that they're silly. But like, we want to encourage them to be thinking, to be thoughtful, to be asking questions, and to be expressing the fact that God has blessed them with bodies that, that they get to, to use and to dance and to sing. All right, so dress to impress. No, dress and some sports stuff. Dance. Memorize this verse. Don't be afraid of asking the, student, the kids as they're going through, hey, how are you doing on the verse? Right? Please don't sneak them chocolate if you don't know if they're allergic or not. But I'm not going to say don't sneak them chocolate. Right? Whatever it takes. Let's get them into the word and help them understand how beautiful and powerful Jesus is. So... I love you guys. I'm really excited about this. I think that's all of my stuff because then the next one is, what did I get myself into? And so I, Cheryl gets to chill everybody out after I tear everyone. Thank you, Michael. Yes, thank you. Okay. Awesome. Tough act to follow. You guys are so, so eloquent and beautiful. And I'm sorry, it won't be, but bear with me. Um, so one of the most important things, well, wait, oh, sorry. Okay. One of the most important things is to know who you're working with, but we're gonna save our introductions for the end, because then hopefully if we um, have time, you can get into your groups and meet the people that you're gonna be working with, and then if your head coach is here, they can touch base with you, if there's anything they want you to know, etc., etc. So we're gonna save the introductions for the end, um, but I have to apologize because one of the most important people in this room that some of you may not know is Shannon Fout. Shannon is helping with um, all of this organizational stuff this year, and sh she is awesome. If you do not know her, take some time to get to know her. Thank you, Sarah, or Shannon, so much for helping. I just look at it, Sarah, and just look at talking about me. Um, but yeah, Shannon has been wonderful. So the model that I have always tried to do with leading stuff is to have one person lead and have one person assist, and then the next year the assistant becomes the leader, and then that, that leader finds another assistant. So we can keep sh you know sharing the wealth of this lovely opportunity to get to serve if you have the gift of administration especially. But even if you don't, it's super fun. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of work, but it's super fun. But Shannon is gonna be stepping into this role next year, God willing, um, so. You guys will all be hearing from Shannon next year. Okay, so um, what did I get myself into, also known as volunteer expectations? So um, what time to be here? So on your handout, there's some just kind of general guidelines. So you'll see up on the activity locations, we have a volunteer green room this year. So if you come early or if you're coming straight from work and you need to change your clothes or you need to sit down and eat a little bit before 5.45 or whatever, 
the preschool room is just across the hallway and we'll have some signs up too you'll figure it out but um, if you have if you got to change your clothes or you have to bring stuff or whatever you can just keep it in there um, you know we're gonna have water and snacks in there throughout the night so if you just need a little quiet time it's probably not gonna be super quiet in there but you can go in there and close the door and take a breath and get a drink and whatever um, but it's also a place just to kind of put your stuff if, if you want to do that um, but the green room is is just a, it's a convenience for us we don't want to spend a lot of time in there we are here for the campers so when you leave the green room you got to put on your silly face and totally be all in getting to know our campers making them feel welcome and helping them to feel loved and that we're happy that they're here <clears throat> so we're going to open the doors for the children at 5 45 so we would ask you unless something happens and i know sometimes it's impossible to get here and I know some of you are coming from work and I truly appreciate because it's a long day of work and then you come here and it, it's a lot of energy, but try your hardest to be here before 545. So um, unless you're a snack team or registration, pretty much any, if you're involved with sports or dance team, but if you're involved with any of the sports groups, super important to, for the adults, to be in the gym. We're gonna, when kids come in and after they register, we're gonna have all of our youth helpers, so Levi and Chloe and Hannah, um, will be ushering kids down to the gym. All the adult helpers for all the sports, there's gonna be signs all over the gym for each of the sports. Before 545, go into the gym if you're one of those people and stand by your sign and then as kids come in, the youth helpers are gonna take them to their sport and then the adults, it's your responsibility not to be visiting with your friends, to be engaging with your kids, getting to know their name, helping them to know your name, telling them how excited you are and get some of that crazy stuff that Michael was talking about. Just be fun and uplifting with the kids and just you know make it fun. Um, it's gonna go super fast. This, the whole night goes super fast. So if you have a watch, that helps. Um, Cause looking at a cell phone, people think, oh, they're looking at their texts again. Even if you're just using it for a watch, so, or for time. So if you have a watch, it's really best just to use a watch, but if you don't, you know, whatever. But um, just, you have to be keeping an eye on the time. So then somebody will be meeting you in the gym so be keeping an eye on the time, close to six, be ready to come in here. There's gonna be more signs in here with where you go. You're gonna stay with your group for the whole night. Um, then you'll be ushering your kids in here. There'll be instructions for how you're gonna do that. Get in here as quickly and orderly as possible and so that the opening rally can start at six. Um, and youth helpers, just be at the registration table no later than a couple minutes before 5.45. It'll take a couple minutes to get the kids signed in and do all that stuff, but be ready. Go down, take your kids down, put them in their proper place, and then come back and get more kids. We don't want kids running around the building unattended or be lost and not know where they're supposed to go. We want to be good hostess and hosted hosts and hostesses and really help everybody to feel comfortable and to know where everything is at. Um, so for the green room, also last year there were some people that said, you know, it'd be really helpful. We had some meals here for the volunteers that are coming from work. So we're going to make that available. And our lovely Sheila Conkey has volunteered to um, get bills for people. If you are coming from work and you don't have time to stop or pack a lunch or whatever, you just, you know, it's just a more convenient. Sheila's going to get some food and bring it in. So there is a sign up on this table right here. If you want any meals at all, you can get them all five days a week, one day a week. We're going to try and see if Chick-fil-A will maybe donate some food. You know, it's going to be something a little different probably every night, but Sheila will be taking care of that. Her phone number is also in here. So if you decide later you want to do meals, text her and make those arrangements. So please, before you leave today, sign up to um, for meals if you want 
But otherwise, it's, you're fine bringing in a, a lunch or whatever, you know, whatever you want to do. But there's that. Um, I don't think it's on the... Okay. If you do, just put that on there. Yes. Oh, on the sign up? Yeah, I yeah. think I did put that on there. Okay. It's been a while since I did that. I'm sorry, I'm not keeping up with this. Oh, we are keeping up. We're right where we need to be. <laughs> so every night when you get here, no matter what time it is, hope, I mean, you're going to be here pretty early in the day, so things are going to be set up and ready to go for every night. But if you don't go into the green room, that's optional. But every single night when you come, there's a check chicken room, which is the next room, which is our nursery, which is also across the hall, and we'll have a sign for it, where you're going to go in, and there's going to be a check-in so we know who's here, so if we're short in volleyball, we can grab somebody from basketball to go help in volleyball or whatever, so we know who's here every night helping, so we can keep track of all of that. And you're going to pick up a lanyard. Every one of the volunteers, every, every, every volunteer will have a lanyard. It'll say volunteer unless you're a rally coach or a head coach. I think that's it. Um, and on the back of the lanyard, very, very important is the schedule for the night. And again, this goes super fast. So, I mean, I am constantly during camp looking at this going, oh my gosh, we have, we have session one at 6.15 or whatever it is. So you know and you can help keep things moving along because we don't want to be late for anything. When parents get here at 8 o'clock to pick up kids, we don't want to still be doing our sports stuff. We want to be done with the closing rally and, and waiting, for, waiting for parents to come. So please keep an eye on this schedule. This is the Monday through Thursday schedule. Friday night, we do parent night. So we do the same schedule, we just abbreviate it because at 7.15, we have parents that will be here for our closing rally and the kids will all do little um, demonstrations of what they've been learning all week and you know whatever the each of the groups wants to do with them. Um, and then we're gonna have ice cream after. So um, we hope that you all can stay for all that and that you, if, you know, a lot of people always have to miss on Fridays because there's stuff going on. But if, if you're here, it's super fun and just really festive. And so we have, um, our snack team is going to kind of help set that up, but we could really use a few more hands to help serve ice cream. So if you think you can do that, if you could please raise your hand right now and we will um, count you in, keep your hand up, and Shannon is going to write your name down. Um, Shannon, do you know everybody whose hands are up? Just make up a name if you don't. <laughs> yellow shirt. Yeah, yellow shirt. <laughs> yellow shirt, white beer. <laughs> Believe me, a really loud voice. <laughs> okay. um, thank you guys very much. That'll be perfect. Um, and then after Friday night, after the ice cream, this room won't have any of this stuff here and it needs to be all here again by Sunday morning. So we need tons of hands to help us put the building back together. We're gonna to have tables in a couple of rooms that need to be pulled out so that the nursery and preschool room are ready for Sunday morning and there's a lot of stuff to do. Many hands makes a light work. Mm -hmm. And last year we did it in, I mean it was like 15 or 20 minutes. I was so blown away. I was talking to someone and I walked in and it's like, Oh my work is this <laughs> it's amazing so if you can stay after i know everyone is exhausted it's a long week it'll probably be hot it'll you know but it really really helps even if it's just putting a few chairs back or whatever everybody it's a little drop in the bucket that makes up an ocean of wonderfulness so thank you guys are so wonderful to do that okay <clears throat> probably i'm not keeping up there's the schedule. Um, what should I do if I cannot be here? So it's super, super important. We are counting on you guys to be here every single night, but we know that's not always possible. So if you cannot be here, absolutely, as soon as you know, if you can't be here during kids camp, let Shannon or me know. And I think I actually just put my phone number on here because Shannon works 
full time, so we're not bothering her during the day. So um, just text me and we'll make sure we know if you cannot be here. And we also know things come up, you get, you, you know, ate some bad shrimp or something and it's like, yeah, I, I, I can't come tonight. Um, we know it's gonna happen short notice, so please just keep us apprised immediately if you think you cannot be here, because that's super, super important. Um, water and food safety. So every night when the kids come, they'll get a bottle of water. And I'm gonna say right now too, I meant to have the sign up down here, but you guys know where the sign up is up at the Welcome Center. So snacks, Jen Dixon asked, is doing snacks this year, and she asked um, if people wanna make donations. She asked if we could have specific items so that the kids are all getting pretty much the same kind of thing every night. Um, and then she knows if you sign up, then she can start knowing how much we're gonna have of everything and how much she's gonna have to go buy. We also are asking for donations of water because we give the kids a new water bottle every night. So when they check in, they get a name tag and they get a uh, name tag to put on their water bottle. Um, so hopefully they will keep track of their water bottle. We have a water boy this year that's gonna be, um, he'll make sure we have water coolers in all of the good places to go to fill them up. Adults, watch kids, especially the little ones if they need help refilling their bottles for sanitation and stuff with their water, water bottle and stuff. But, you know, just, um, and please make sure your kids are hydrated, especially the volleyball kids outside, because if it's hot, that's gonna be super important. So we'll, we'll need to be checking and making sure you guys stay hydrated. But everybody, we don't want anybody passing out. Oh, thank you. Michael brought down the snack sign up. So if you can do snacks, thank you very much. We do have a couple people with allergies already that have registered. We don't have many kids registered yet. So if you know people, um, we have extra no kids. Uh, please invite them. They can go online, super easy to use the form online, or we have some paper copies. Lisa has a few right here, there's more upstairs, or see me and I can get you copies if you need those. And there's a different one for preschool yes. and the Thank you, yeah, we need different information. Um, so I think that's just about it, except for introductions, which we'll do here in just a minute. Um, we have to get all these chairs and tables out before we can start camp too. So the Sunday before kids camp, we're gonna ask for volunteers at the service. So Michael and Margie, we wanna put that in the announcements at the beginning of service and then Dave always makes an announcement at the end of service for my people. Please do not leave if you can come help take the tables out and chairs out of Fellowship Hall, because it's a lot. But if we get a bunch of people again, it goes super, super. So that's really the only setup. There may be some other things, but if, if we need help with setup, you'll be getting a phone call from Shannon or me. <laughs> okay, so yeah, before you leave, if you wanna sign up for meals, if you wanna sign up for snacks, um, those are right there. And I think that's it. So Michael, can you come up and pray for us now? And then what we're gonna do Michael's going to come up and pray, and then I'm going to just do introductions of all the team. And so probably when I say your name, just stand up just in case not everybody here knows everybody. Um, I know you may not remember, but, you know, it's a start. Um, and then if you want to, head coaches, if you want to break into your teams, I don't know some of these teams. Some of the teams are not, there's not a lot of people here that will be here more here on Thursday. Um, but we'll just kind of, you can go, if you're on the registration team, you'll go to Lisa Black and so on and so forth. And I don't know if we have any dance people here today. So anyhow, we're going to pray and then we'll do introductions. That's great. Father, thank you for um, giving us the opportunity to do this event, Lord. I pray that we would approach it with a uh, with heart's desire to honor you and glorify you that we would be able to set aside ourselves and, and um, things that maybe we are uh, nervous about or concerned about, we would trust in you, Lord. And I thank you for um, 
a space that allows us to do this type of event uh, where we can spread out, where we have all these rooms and places to, to gather and, and to teach children about you. And what I pray for everyone here as we, as we prepare to make, to sacrifice a week of evenings, Lord, I pray that we would do so with cheerful hearts, um, that it wouldn't become a burden, Lord, but we could serve um, in this way, uh, knowing that uh, children are so precious, Father. And I just ask that as uh, we get closer, that people would remain healthy, Lord, both the kids and those who are going to be volunteering and serving. Lord, I pray for kids to come. I pray for, for you to uh, help us with our with however we, we are inviting, whether it's inviting our neighbors or inviting, inviting family or friends. Lord, I just um, I pray that we would present an offering that is pleasing to you through this event, and that children would come to um, know you, that children would have the seed of the gospel planted, they're not yet at a spot where they come to know you, Lord, and that this would be an event that ultimately sings your praises among the city and the neighborhoods that we're a part of. I thank you for all these people who are here today for giving over their time to, as we learn and listen and, and try and prepare ourselves for this. I thank you for the food. Um, I ask that you would bless as you prepared it for us. And uh, just, Lord, I pray uh, ultimately that we would do nothing to honor ourselves, Lord, but that we do all that we do to honor you above all. Thank you for these people, for this incredible church. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Don't forget to sign up. Um, so, introductions. So, everybody, you can see uh, pretty much everybody's on the is on your handout it doesn't list the teams so i'm going to include the team names so when when people start volunteering and this has been incredible i did this last year too and i am blown away by you guys and your willingness to step up and serve it it's incredible i mean it's like we have almost 60 people helping and we right now we have 13 children registered. So pray for kids. I mean, last year there were way more volunteers in this building than there were kids, but we needed every one of the volunteers. They all got put to work. And so if if um, you're here, or anything, uh, if I have forgotten to tell you what your job is for the week, or I'm, I'm adding more stuff that you will hear me say right now, I'm profusely apologize. <laughs> I have tried to contact everyone to let you all know, but I'm pretty sure I missed some, so I am sorry about that. So this also helps for all of you to kind of be aware of what I'm expecting of you for this, <laughs> this week. <laughs> so, all right. So rally coaches, Dave isn't here, and Michael. Um, and Jackson Snorek is made a man, and he's not here. Um, and so we have given Gretchen Spooner the official title of camp superintendent. So if there are any discipline, she's she's our first line of defense. I'm only, if we have to call that ambulance or I have to go give her a clean because she is so great at this. So she is going to be here greeting people as they come in, and then she's going to be floating around, and she'll be available. So she's our camp superintendent this year. Um, so Dionysia, if you want to stand up again, she's already stood up once, but she's our, yay, our music and dance coach. And um, she has four people on her team this year. I'm going to name them Stephanie House, or three people, right? Three people. Um, Stephanie House, Kamari Pryor, and Stephen Bovell. So if you don't know those peeps, we're going to have two boys on our dance team this year. I'm so pumped. <laughs> Going to be so cool. For your team, Myra Pollard and Min Key isn't here today, and Stefan. Our when Stefan is not dancing, and as he has time, he, time he's going to come in and be praying as well. So I love that we have people that are supporting the prayer team. Registration is a huge team because it includes the people at the table, but it also includes the greeters. 
So Lisa Black is the head coach for registration. So people on that team are Sam Snyder, Naomi Allen, Nan and Byron Hansen, Sue Reck, Angel Harker. And the greeters are Deborah Williams Woo! and Gretchen Spooner, Mario Creighton, Marcia Watkins, and Nicole Goody. So um, awesome, awesome group of people to receive and be joyful with as people come through the door. That was such a great feedback last year. People just really appreciated having a friendly face at the door and to be able to tell people where to go to the bathroom or to get a drink of water or whatever. It's just, it was wonderful. So thank you guys. So, so much. So after we're done, you can go talk to Lisa because I know she wants to talk to you. Um, let's see. Snack coach, Jen Dixon. Yay! We're purposely keeping our snack team a little smaller this year. Got a little crazy last year. Fran Bays couldn't be here today. She wanted to be, she's supposed to be here Thursday night. Um, and Levi Dixon is going to be on the snack team this year. And Gretchen Spooner will also be helping as needed, and Justin Amon, if he's available, could be doing running because once the snacks are made, they need to be taken to the sports, so we might need some more hands. So Justice, when you're done with tech, if you could please go see if you're needed. If you're not needed, just get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> go ask him to be nice first. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, let's see. Safety coach, Heather Garrison. Woo. Yay, Heather. We're gonna have Heather right over here by the registration table. Heather, you're gonna have the job of handing out the water to the kids and helping them with the um, their tag, name tags on their water as they get it. And we have an awesome um, first aid kit, thanks to Corey. And so that'll be there. We can do all kinds of things. We can like do IVs and surgery and all kinds of things. So we are already. <laughs> Photographers, I don't think we have any photographers here today, um, but if it's Sydney Shaman, um, yeah. Ashley Moore, Alyssa Langley, and Shane Key. And Alyssa and Shane are both going to be helping in crafts. So it, they'll be, as they can catch pictures, people, but um, she, Sydney and Ale Ashley will be doing pictures. But anybody, if you guys take pictures, um, I can you make a note? We're going to make a link on probably on the Google Drive. So if you have some really cool pictures that you want to share, we're going to try and put a video together um, to share on Sunday. And it doesn't have to be pictures. It can be videos. Sometimes they're really cool and they're really fun to add into the little video, you know, this, the synopsis at the end. So videos, anything, we'll put them in a Google Drive link. So I'll be sending that out to everybody when Shannon gets that set up. Because it's just tech. Okay. Cheer, Margie Oman. Yeah. She's been doing cheer for many years. Because she has a daughter that does cheer, she does cheer. <laughs> Thank you, Margie. Um, Emily Gibbs is also doing cheer, and she was a cheerleader. So um, two head coaches for cheer is awesome. And the team is Stephanie House, and she's available, and Pam Key. And so we're, and maybe, maybe another person or two that we haven't totally got committed yet. So, um, we'll be, you'll know about those as they happen. Crafts, Jill Lee will be here on Thursday, and her team is Jen Fish, and Alyssa Langley, and Pam Stone, and, and Shin, or Pam, yeah, Pam Stone, and Shin Key. And we don't have anybody from Crafts here today, but the Crafts is gonna be awesome, and we're not putting Crafts in Fellowship Poly Sherry, it's going away from this room, because that was a problem last year. We're putting them down in 002. Um, and volleyball, oh, I'm so excited for volleyball. Eric Fish and Logan Irvin are gonna be the head coaches. And Wayne Pollard is one of our, Wayne Pollard? Oh no, you're basketball, sorry. I'm sorry. Gary Trueblood. <laughs> Gary Trueblood is one of the huddle coaches and Chloe Teeters and Hannah Rodriguez are helping there too. So thank you guys very much. And you guys will be outside. The rain location right now is in here, which isn't, particularly desirable, so hopefully we can figure out some drills if we have to be in this room. We just do laps around the room. There won't be any tables and chairs in here. <laughs> Basketball. Rob Petrie had to leave. Rob Petrie and Kenton Lee are the head coaches for basketball. And Wade Pollard is our coach there, along with um, 
two of the Rodriguez boys. I think it's June and Malachi. Um, yeah, and they couldn't be here today either. But and they, Hannah, Judah, and Malachi all do sports, and so they may not be able to be here every night. But and Chloe can't be here a couple nights. So thank you for being here. Um, preschool. AJ Teeter is the head coach. <laughs> And we do have Lee Ruxes on that team. And T. Yaw and Poole are not here, but Hannah Snyder is. And Hannah is also, where did Hannah go? Oh, you're Hannah. You're looking, I'm sorry, Hannah. I'm sorry, Hannah. I need to have the Snyders over to dinner because I really need to know your family. Sorry. I'm so sorry, Hannah, for me. Thank you, Hannah, for agreeing to help. It'll be fun. And Elizabeth, did I say Elizabeth? But yeah, sorry. Got a little side right there. Um, so, is there anybody here? <coughs> Jim Black. I didn't call your name. Are you, you're going to be at our registration if you're here. I'm, I'm doing whatever she tells me to do. <laughs> I get to be his boss. Yes. <laughs> okay. Is there anybody else that's here that I haven't called your name? Jim Mommen, are you going to help us? I have jobs for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find it and let you know. Can you write this name down too so I don't forget? You don't forget to assign him a job. Okay, so if you want to get with your team, registration team, greeters, if you want to like go huddle up with Lisa, you might be the only team of people that we have here. Everybody else is kind of little pieces here and there, which thank you all for being here. And that's the end of this. Okay. Meeting.